If you have 60 to 80,000 to spend and you want to get into a 911, this video is for you. Because I've noticed over the last few years, as of you, if you're an enthusiast, that supply levels for Porsches have gone way down and prices are at an all time ridiculous high. So for $60,000 to $80,000, what can you hop in at this point in 2022 and going into the foreseeable future? Well, a few years ago, I would have said for $60,000 to $80,000, you could have easily have found a 991.1 generation car and you would have had a few different years to choose from. But that's just not the reality of things anymore. The reality is for around $60,000 on the low end, you're going to start seeing 997 generation cars like this 2006 C4S cab with a six speed manual going for about $62,000. So at this price point, I want to answer the question of whether or not you should consider hopping into one of these older cars, especially after only dri driving the modern 911s. I feel like it'll be nice to drive one of the more, one of the older models at this point to determine whether or not it's still a fun driving experience and whether it's worth the money in 2022. So with that said, Let's get into it. Produced from 2005 to 2013, the 997 generation 911s were exciting cars, and this 2006 Carrera 4S doesn't disappoint. It features a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated flat six that produces 355 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds of torque put through a six-speed manual transmission through a rear-biased all-wheel drive system. This makes for a 0-60 to 60 time of just 4.7 seconds and a top speed of 179 miles an hour. All right. Look at these. Remember these? Yeah, for those of you younger than me, I'm 26. Um, yeah, these are keys. And to be honest with you, I never thought I'd say this when I was younger, but it is really satisfying to put a real key in an ignition. On the left here, look at that. She's alive. Get a little acceleration in. <laughs> you see, this car takes a bit of focus to drive and I like that. You know, it's, it's not like you're doing a crazy speed when you, you go through the gears a bit, but if you notice my face there, I actually had to focus on what I was doing because there is no auto rev matching in this car. There's no nannies that are really helping you along other than a basic electronic stability control program, you know, if you were to slide out a bit. But, you know, I grew up watching all these uh, automotive journalists review these cars and say, you know, like around 2012 when the 991 came out, oh, you know, they've done away with the hydraulic steering rack. You uh, don't get as much road feel, this and that, this and that. I thought, oh, well, how bad could it really be? Not saying that the new cars are bad, but I'll be honest with you, now driving this, this is the oldest 911 I've driven. It really is a wonderful thing to drive. You know, going into the turns, the smallest amount of steering input really does translate onto the road. And you know what, the newer cars are great with that, but I have to say, with the hydraulic steering rack, you really do feel, you, you have more of an idea of what's going on underneath you. You have more of a sense of connection. And I know, you know, things change, but I definitely would say that's something you do lose in the modern cars. The newer cars are, are, are amazing cars. They're more luxury oriented, in my opinion now, because they're more insulated, they're more solid, they feel heavier on the road. This feels like a little go-kart, a little toy. You know, you, you little, little inputs to the steering and it's right there. When you're in a modern 911, you're sitting down and looking out, you know, the car. This, the dashboard, the windshield, uh, and the hood is, is so low that you really are looking down onto the road. more so than in the new cars. You sit up higher in this car. Um, personally, that's a bit of a drawback for me because I do like sitting low, 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 hunkered down into the car, but some people may like this a little bit better. It doesn't really take away too much from the experience for me. I will say though, if you are a bigger person, you may not fit in this car that easily. I have to say I'm six foot one, I'm about 210 pounds and 
I feel like this car is completely wrapped around me. If I was any bigger, I, I probably wouldn't be having a good time in this car. Um, since it's smaller, I mean, I would say that you could daily drive this car if you had to, but I probably wouldn't want to. I mean, you could daily drive it also because it is four wheel drive, you know, all wheel drive. So you do have capability in the winter time. Um, but this probably would just be a weekend car for me. Something that you immediately notice going from the uh, newer cars down to this is uh, without the turbochargers, you don't have much torque in the low rev range of the engine. But in my opinion, the exhaust note on this car is significantly better than the turbocharged cars. Sorry, had to say it. I like that you have more power in the low end, but I also love hearing a naturally aspirated motor. It just sounds so nice. This is a car also that I feel like you don't have to go fast to really enjoy it. You see these newer cars, they, they're so perfect. They're, they're, they're so capable that unless you're going a ridiculous speed, you won't even really feel like you're pushing the car. You will find that you'll enjoy pushing this car a lot more than you'll enjoy pushing the newer cars because you feel it more. You know, it's not built as well as the newer cars. You hit bumps and you get a little bit of cowl shake and you feel a little bit of wriggle through the steering wheel. But in my opinion, that's what makes this car really enjoyable to drive, even at slower speeds, because you feel it more. The brake feel is great. There's a lot of bite in the top of the pedal and it's very easy to modulate. And the throttle response is the throttle response is there too. I think one of the things I enjoy a lot too is when you go through the gears, you have that real mechanical feel as you're going through. You feel that notchiness. Really, really enjoyable car to drive because of it. I would have to say as an overall driving experience, I really enjoy it. Me personally, I probably wouldn't choose to daily drive it just because it's a little bit smaller and I do long commutes. But as a fun around town car, I'd love to have one of these personally. Um, it's very well balanced. It has enough power to enjoy around town. I could use it in the winter time if I want to because it has all wheel drive. So if I get caught out, I'm not gonna really worry about it. And uh, it's just a nice place to be. The interior, you got this nice uh, full leather interior. It really catches a lot of looks and uh, you know, cost to own one of these really isn't as expensive as some other sports cars. These cars maintain their value very well. So theoretically, if you wanted to buy one of these, you can hop in one, sell it in a few years, take a very minimal loss, or it may even appreciate as it did for a lot of people who own these, you know, bought them say 2018, 2019. They made some money on these cars. So, you know, with that said, there really isn't a lot of downsides, I would say, to owning one of these cars, um, you know, from that standpoint. Now, if you're somebody who cares about technology, like I said earlier, don't forget, it hasn't come out yet, but Porsche is gonna be coming out with a revised head unit for these cars that you can install after the fact, which is something cool to know. And uh, it's modern enough where I feel like the reliability is gonna be there. Um, but it's also old enough where you also get a little bit more of that feedback from the driving experience and a little bit more enjoyment in other ways. It may not be the fastest car, but it doesn't need to be that fast to really enjoy because of how connected you feel to the road and you know the experience overall. So with that said, I would definitely recommend one of these. Um, I think you, it just comes down to driving it and you know your personal preferences and what you look for in a car. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you don't miss out on next week's video. Before I go, I'd like to say a special thanks to my friends down at Porsche Fairfield, Connecticut for making this video possible. They're an awesome, super helpful, friendly group of people to work with. And if you're in the market for one of these, be sure to check them out. I'm gonna leave a link in their description below so you can do so. But that's it, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video.